What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and I can't stress that enough and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those who are out there who new to the game I just need a little bit of advice or for those who are out there who just want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year so yes in today's episode of who to sign for guys we're going to stay in the Champions League but move to Spain and take a look at who to sign for an Atletico Madrid career mode that's right Atletico who are one of the most enjoyable five-star teams you can use for a career mode in FIFA 20. They're one of the five-star teams where you're not expected to win everything in the first season, and you can have a very long and successful and fun long-term project with them as well. A lot of five-star teams in FIFA career mode, you're expected to win most, if not everything, in the first season, and you can do it all in a couple of years. But with Atletico, it's, it's more of a long-term project if you want to be successful both in Spain and in Europe as well, due to the Barcelona and Real Madrid, uh, we call it dominance in Spain if you will, where they are the, the main two clubs in Spain. And of course in the Champions League as well, trying to capture that Champions League too. But again, they're a five-star team. They're a really, really good team. There's some good young talent here at Atletico Madrid. You've got one of the best young talents in the game in uh, João Felix. Uh, of course, you've got Sol, one of the uh, the best and highest uh, growing players in the game as well. Highest potential, I should say. And you've got the best goalkeeper in the game as well in Jan Oblak. So it's a really good team. There's some very, very decent young players here as well. And as a five-star team, they've got a budget of around 70 to 71 million million pounds with wage budget alteration and in the first season the board have given you some pretty generous objectives domestically but a tough one in Europe that's right domestically in Spain the board expect you to finish in the top four in La Liga that is very easily done and you know anything short of that and it's a catastrophic failure with this team no doubt about that you should definitely be targeting third place bare minimum even fourth will be disappointing third place bare minimum and try and break up the old Clasico lads and get into the top two and in the cup the Copa del Rey reached the semi-final. Both of those objectives very, very easy to achieve. But the European objective is the tough one, to reach the final of the Champions League. They've done it before, they can do it again with this team, there's no doubt about that, but with the quality of teams of the Champions League, that is going to be tough in your very first season. Now they have, I believe, six players with their deals up come the end of the year. Two players currently on loan here in Mayhaz and Yannick Ferreira Carrasco as well. Personally speaking, I'd let everyone go apart from Ricardo Riquelme. This is a 19 year old right midfielder. Starts off 65 overall and I believe has 81 potential worth keeping around for the future but the players want to transfer list here you can see the players that I've put on the list you've got Adan, Diego Costa, Hector Herrera who you can't actually sell in the first season unless a club meets the release clause as he's a new signing, Vitolo, Rosalco, Arias, Carlos Isaac and Solano two young right backs there at the end too. Um, now as you see the players on transfer this day, you know most of those players are in their mid to late 20s, don't have any potential whatsoever and they're going to start decreasing soon and as for the likes of Adan and Diego Costa, uh, obviously with Costa he is now 30 years old I believe and you can go the whole season without him declining but it is likely he will show signs of decline after the first campaign and as for Antonio Adan, the backup goalkeeper as well, you can get younger and you can get better. But uh, in terms of new signings with Atletico Madrid where would I look to improve this team? Well, I would personally recommend bringing in two new fullbacks for their side. Now, of course, under Simeone, they played a 4-4-2. And whilst you've got Kieran Trippier, the new man in from Spurs, formerly of Burnley as well, playing right back. And you've got Renan Lodi, a very talented youngster, uh, playing left back with the exciting prospect tag as well. I still believe you can get better players for the fullback role and improve the back four here at the Metropolitano. And in terms of the right back role, I definitely look to improve that. I know you've got Arias, but I put him on a transfer list. Same with Versalco as well. And whilst Trippier is a new man in, I'd rather have Kieran off the bench and bring in someone better for the first 11. Three names I'd recommend here. You've got Ricardo Pereira of Leicester City, Nelson Semedo of Barcelona, and also Lucas Klosterman of RB Leipzig. Now, all three will be great choices. Klosterman will be the cheapest of the three. Pereira will cost you the most, although he is the highest rate at 84 overall with 86 potential as well. But the middleman, Nelson Semedo, I think 
represents the best value for money. He's 25 years old, so in the prime of his career right now, 82 rated and has plus three potential as well. So he gets to 85 at his peak and with dynamic potential can get in to the high 80s. Barcelona won't hold you to ransom over his signature. You can get him for around 24 to 25, 26 million pounds. We pay 25 million for him and the Portuguese right back is superb. Sprint speed, acceleration and stamina. Those are his top three stats and all of those are mandatory on a modern day fullback slash wingback. He's got four star skills as well, medium high work rates, good defensive stats and great dribbling stats when going forward can be a real handful for uh, opposition defenders and again he's three years younger than Kieran Trippier one rating higher and has 85 potential as well so whilst you've got a bit of a right back overload here at Atletico Madrid that's what you'll notice when you start to save off there are tons of right backs here if you include the reserve uh, fringe players here whilst for Salco and Santiago Arias they're not they're not bad right backs at all Arias I believe is 79 rated for Salco is 80 rated and you know they're both in their mid-20s right now they've still got a few years for this start showing signs of decline. Personally speaking, I'd sell them now, get some cash in, and reinvest in a better right back. That's what we did here with Arias selling him to RB Leipzig. Same with Rosalico going to Napoli in order to sign the better and younger player in Nelson Semedo. And really, that's the key of Atletico Madrid, getting better whilst also getting younger as well. Uh, so after selling those two right backs there, as you could see, I decided to go in for our second new signing of the summer window, and I talked about it. I would recommend two new fullbacks with Atletico Madrid. Now, Reynan Lodi is very, very young and I believe has 85 or perhaps 86 potential, but it's 79 rated. You'll notice when you load up the game and you look at Atletico's first team, he is the weakest player in terms of overall rating to begin with. Whilst he does have some decent growth, you'll probably want someone better to start with in the left back role. Now, Sol can play there and there's nothing wrong with Sol whatsoever at left back. However, he is more of a midfielder by trade. And in terms of a starting left back here, two names I think would be great for Atletico Madrid. You've got Grimaldo of Benfica, who would be, uh, would be my number one option. Unfortunately, you probably want me to get, able to get him in the first season, as Benfica won't let him go, as they haven't got enough depth in that position. But for Jose Gaia, you can get the guy for around 27 to 30 million pounds. That's what we paid for him. His wages are incredibly cheap as well. And he's 81 rated, so two ratings higher than Rain and Lodi. And whilst he is 24 years old, don't be put off by that, because he still has some very decent growth and gets to 86 at his potential uh, as well. He's got some great stats. Sprint speed is top stat with stamina close by second as well. And being two ratings higher than Reynan Lodi as well means he's better for now and also good enough to challenge with him for the starting left back role in the future too. With him being Spanish, it's always kind of nice signing players that can play for the same country as the club. Club and country, good name for a series. But uh, yeah, guys, got some very good stats. And again, Lodi, Lodi's a great young talent. There's no doubt about that. But you probably want someone a little bit better for now. And Jose Gaia definitely is. Two ratings higher despite being three years older. So he was my second signing with Atletico Madrid and you'll notice we also sold Antonio Adan to Borussia Dortmund for £11 million as well. Nothing wrong with the backup goalkeeper whatsoever. Of course, Jan Oblak being the best goalkeeper in the game at 91 overall will be a starting goalkeeper no matter who you bring in. But with Adan, again, you can get the guy out of the club for around £11 million. He is going to start decreasing in his stats right from the very get-go. So it's worth selling and cashing in whilst you can get as much money as possible. And the same can be said for Diego Costa as well. Both of these guys are now in their 30s. Costa, uh, of course, the Brazilian-born Spaniard, is 82 rated. He's good enough to be a starting striker alongside Alvaro Morata as two ex-Chelsea boys. However, I would personally recommend selling him in the first season because despite his decent rating at 30 years old, he is probably going to start showing declines in the very first season. If not, then towards the end of it. So you can get around 27 to 30 mil for him. We've got 27 million, as you see on Dan here goes to Germany to uh, Borussia Dortmund for 11 million pounds as well and uh, yeah as Costa goes to Liverpool 27 million you can get a better striker for the first 11 or if you'd prefer you can just start João Felix at 80 rated and have him partnering Alvaro Morata up top but once you have sold a Dan you'll want a backup goalkeeper for the bench of course and you don't need to sign a Gigi Donnarumma for example uh, or a David De Gea uh, for the backup goalkeeper role you don't need someone that's got a very high rating you just need someone that's younger than Antonio 
Emmanuel Adan and is decent enough to be not a step back from him in terms of his ability as well. Four names on the shortlist here. You've got Mike Mainan of uh, Lille. Uh, you've got the uh, the Greek goalkeeper Vlakon Dimos as well. Uh, Alessio Kragno of Cagliari too and Dominic Lubakovic of Dinamo Zagreb as well. Uh, now the first two are probably going to cost you a little bit too much money than you want to part with in the first season for a backup goalkeeper but for Kragno and Lubakovic you can get these guys for around 19 to 22, 23 million pounds and either of them would be really really good options here for Atletico Madrid because whilst they're not quite uh, going to be as good as Jan Oblak at 91 in the future they both still have really good potential. Lubakovic grows to 86 overall, Kragno gets to 87 overall so still very highly rated uh, for a goalkeeper and they're not really steps back from a Dan in terms of ability as well. In the end we opted to sign Alessio Kragno for £22 million. Pounds. An 81 rated, he's just as good as Adan, who we sold to Borussia Dortmund and whilst we part with double the money we got for the Spanish goalkeeper, Kragno is I believe 6 or perhaps 7 years younger than the man he is replacing and again with 87 potential grows really really well as a backup goalkeeper to hopefully one day challenge Jan Orblak with dynamic potential getting him in to the high 80s around 88 to 89 overall. So Kragno will be probably my first choice backup goalkeeper out of the four there and as for Diego Costa as well again it's up to you if you want to part with Diego Costa or not personally speaking, I would recommend cashing in in the first season to get as much as possible just before he does start to show signs of decline and after we sold Diego Costa as well still had a little bit of money left over here as I couldn't sell these back up right back you'll notice here Solano and Carlos Isaac I was doing my very best to get these guys out of the club but unfortunately no matter how many times I accepted bids here they just wouldn't leave funny enough Carlos Isaac did eventually leave after I started the, uh, the simulation but uh, that went uh, that, that deal eventually went through but uh, he went to uh, Millwall in uh, in that deal but uh, for new signings with Atletico Madrid you've got the three, more, uh, three boys coming in there in uh, Alessio Cragno Jose Gaia and Nelson Semedo as well once we had the season ticket money coming in to the Metropolitano as well we had a load of money remaining in our budget and the final big signing I would make with Atletico Madrid is a new man up top once you sold Diego Costa and replaced the aging Brazilian born Spaniard, you'll want to get someone new in to either sit on the bench for Alvaro Morata and Jao Felix or start up top alongside Ivor. And the two names I would recommend here, well, pretty obvious ones. Timo Werner of RB Leipzig, who, as we know, is on his way to Stamford Bridge in real life, but in the game, you can still get hold of the guy, or Lautaro Martinez of Inter Milan. Both fabulous young strikers performing so well right now in both the Bundesliga and the Serie A as well. Werner starts off the highest rated at 86 overall. Lautaro Martinez is 84 overall, but despite being two ratings lower, he's also two years younger and has more potential as well. You'll spend more money to get hold of Timo Werner, but for the long term, Martinez grows to a higher overall. You can get him for around 55 to 60 million pounds in the first summer transfer window. And as we agreed to deal here, Martinez became our final big signing of the summer window. The Argentine is absolutely superb. Learning under Diego Simeone, I quite like that, but yeah. Martinez again for around 55 60 mil is what you can agree upon a fee for in the uh, the first season. And despite being five foot nine, jumping being his highest stat, agility closely afterwards as well. He's he's an amazing player, man. Four star, four star, physically so so quick. He's got the flair trait as well, again the high medium work rates too. And either having him starting up top alongside Jao Felix as your starting duo for all the years you're at the Metropolitano, two fantastic young fours who have uh, some of the highest potential in FIFA career mode or a alongside Alvaro Morata to begin with, the choice is totally yours. But Martinez has 90 potential with dynamic potential, can become the very best player in the world. And he and Jao Felix, once they're both in their prime, once they're both peaking, they will be literally unstoppable as a dynamic duo up top. So after signing of Martinez there, we still had a little bit of cash remaining in our budget after the £55 million pound fee was arranged. And because of that, I signed a couple of squad players who were flooding Madrid. You don't need to do this if you prefer. You can just keep hold of your money and wait until the January window, perhaps a good deal becomes available or save the cash until season two. But for me, we had a little bit of cash left over, so I thought I'd sign a couple more players uh, just for the squad really to give us a bit more depth here. Uh, we signed Fran Beltran of Celta Vigo. He is a 20-year-old, 76-rated holding midfielder. We got him for, I think it was 11 or maybe 11.5 million pounds. Starts on 76 rated, but has 84 potential. Wages aren't too high in the very first few seasons. And again, he's just going to grow quietly in the background. Hector 
Herrera, uh, formerly of Porto, he's 29 years old. So in a couple of seasons, he's going to start showing signs of decline. You'll want someone to come in and sit on the bench. Fran Beltran will be good enough for that as the years go by. And the final signing I made was Jeremy Doku of Anderlet. This guy's got four star, four star, and one of the best, one of the best sort of like project signings you can buy. Someone in the first couple of seasons, he won't really play uh, play much for you, but it'll grow quietly in the background. And despite being 69, rated at 17 years old, not the highest in terms of overall, he does have 87 potential and becomes a monster when he is finally hitting his prime. So he's a, he's a sort of like a... Um, a squad player that you don't really need to think too much about in the first couple of seasons, but eventually he's going to become really, really good for you. So in the end, we signed six players with Atletico Madrid for 146 Point four million pounds, and we sold five players for eighty-four point five million as well. So in the end, it was a net loss of sixty-two million. But you look at the players we sold here; most, if not all of them, are in their late twenties or early thirties. And for the five players that have come in right now, you've got three players that are in their peak at Cragno, uh, Gaia, and Semedo as well. You've got Lautaro Martinez for the starting striker role. Semedo and Gaia as two first-choice fullbacks. Three of those five players are going. Uh, three of those six players, sorry, are going straight into your first 11. You got Cragno for the bench and then Doku and Beltran for the reserves to fill the squad out as well. A really sort of like nicely balanced show of signings here with Atletico Madrid. But the question is, could we hit those objectives? The pretty simple domestic ones, but a tough European one of reaching the Champions League final. Well, as always, we'll simulate to the end of the season and see how Atletico Madrid got on in the first season with a batch of new signings coming in. And as you can see... We did hit the league objective in one of the most bizarre simulated seasons I think I've ever seen. We won La Liga with 36 wins in 38 games, only losing once in the entire season and finishing up with a whopping 109 points. 10 points clear of Barca, 12 clear of Real Madrid as well. And you know, it's it, it's not it's not impossible to dethrone Barca and Real Madrid in the first season and win the title. It wasn't that many years ago when Atletico did win. La Liga, but to do it with 36 wins in 38 games, absolutely absurd. It just goes to show you how broken the league tables are in this year's career mode. Uh, we reached the final of the Supercopa for losing to Barcelona in the final. And as for the Copa del Rey, we did win that, which was really nice to see. So a domestic double for Atletico Madrid as we beat Barcelona by two goals to one in the final. But the real question is, did we reach the Champions League final as the board expected? The toughest objective of the three? Well, unfortunately, this was a bit of a failure. Whilst domestically, we absolutely dominated and had a fantastic season in Spain. In the Champions League, we were knocked out in the round of 16. Uh, sorry, the quarterfinals even uh, by Spurs by a goal to nil in the second leg and 3-1 over two legs as well. So yeah, unfortunately, the Champions League was a failure. Won't try and tweet that one under the rug. But domestically, with Atletico Madrid to win the double and win La Liga with 109 points, 10 points clear of Barcelona and winning every game apart from two and only having one defeat in the season... That was just... <laughs> Honestly, man, when I backed out of the, uh, the simulation and I saw that, I was just like, are you serious, man? But that just goes to show you how broken the league tables are in this year's FIFA career. But either way, man, there's no reason why you shouldn't be targeting a league title in the first season with Atletico. Yes, it's going to be very hard to break up the El Clasico boys, but it is definitely doable. This is a five-star team with a £70 million budget. Because you've got so much depth to this team as well, there are loads of score players you can sell to raise, some e uh, to raise even more money to your budget as well well, there's, there's no reason you can't target a league title in the first season. Again, the domestic aims in the first season of Atletico Madrid are really, really simple. This is a five-star team on merit. There's loads of great players here, some really good young talent too. Again, in my opinion, you should be targeting La Liga in the first season. As tough as it's going to be, there's no reason why you can't outmuscle both Barcelona and Real Madrid. The Champions League objective, again, is a very difficult one, reaching the final. It's certainly doable with this crop of players, but it is going to be tough in the first season. But to be fair, if you were to offer the Atletico Madrid fans in the very first season. A bit of a failure in the Champions League, going out earlier than expected, but a domestic double, winning La Liga of 109 points, winning 36 games out of 38, and only losing one time, I'm pretty sure they'd bite your hand off if you were to offer them that. But either way, Atletico Madrid again, one of the funnest five-star teams to do a career mode with in FIFA 20. Fantastic kits, the Metropolitano, a new stadium, looks absolutely glorious in the game. I love the internal shot it occasionally shows 
in uh, in Champions League games in particular as well. Really nice kits. Again, great team to use. Loads of money in the Champions League already. Some good young talent, but still does require a little bit of work as well. One of the most enjoyable five-star teams you can use for a career mode in FIFA 20. But that was this episode all for the time for, guys. So big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, and if you did, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For very soon.